All right, welcome to CS 2050. Uh, this is a really quick mini lecture on uh, basis representation. Uh, let's see, long ago there was a caveman and he knew how to count, uh, but he can't count that high. He can only, uh, every time he wants to count something, he puts it in a pile. So he has a pile of sticks. That's like three things, that's four things, five things. Puts five things in a pile, he represents that with five distinct items because five items can be represented with five things. Um, then somehow someone discovered probably the greatest invention in all of mathematics is that you can represent numbers in a different way uh, using a, uh, a sequence of symbols. For example, instead of writing 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 that way, that's too long and confusing, you can write 12 that way. You can use sequences of symbols to represent objects uh, better than you can other, use other symbols. And this 12 here is a base, what we would call a basis representation of a number. Um, so uh, uh, for n, any number, uh, we say uh, n uh, is, rep, uh, we say uh, representation of n in base b is a sequence, let's say, uh, AK, uh, AK minus 1, uh, A1, A0, uh, with uh, AI, an element uh, uh, the set uh, 0 to B minus 1, uh, such that uh, N is equal to a to the k base b to the k plus a to the k minus 1 uh, b to the k minus 1 plus dot, 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 plus a 1 b plus a 0 which is equal to the sum of a to the i b to the i i is equal to 0 to k right again overly complicated too many symbols going on but this is base this is a generalization of everything you know about uh, numbers when we write 135 we already know what that is. Uh, there's, there's actually two things going on there. First is that that is a quantity, an idea, but all ideas have to be described in some way. So we need to represent ideas using a sequence of symbols somehow. So humans, naturally, most societies have chosen base 10. But notice that this is actually, rep you can write this uh, in its basis representation as 1 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 plus 5, right? So for this would be, a2 10 squared plus uh, a1 times 10 to the 1 plus 5 plus uh, a0 uh, times 10 to the 0, which is just 1, right? Do you guys know why we use base 10? Like why we use base 10 and not base 2, just like in average everyday calculation since the beginning of civilization, why most people use base 10? We have 10 fingers. If aliens had 8 fingers, they would come at us in base 8, base 2, and so on. Um, the, the, really, the only reason we, we've used base 10 is because we have 10 fingers. 10 toes, too, I guess. But um, computers don't have 10 fingers. They have a positive and negative signal. So we represent uh, mathematical objects on a computer using base 2. And you may know that every number has a base 2 representation. So let's do, uh, let's say 19, and we'll write 19 in base 10. And we'll do a little subscript like that to mean that that is 19 written in base 10. Let's suppose we wanted to write this as some x in base 2, right? So we want to write this in such a way that it's a, it's a summation of powers of 2. So let's convert the number 19 to base 2. Uh, how would we do this? First, I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to say, let's say, uh, let's just try 2 to the 5 plus uh, 2 to the 4 plus uh, 2 to the 3 plus 2 squared plus uh, 2, uh, and it'll we'll say plus uh, 2 to the 0, right? Um, so we want to convert 19 into base 2, right? What you do is, the way you would do this, and by the way, each of these are the coefficients, the bits, so to speak. So each of these is going to be an element of what? What are the possibility, possibilities here? Two, op two possibilities. Each quote-unquote digit, and if it's base 10, takes on a value, represents a value from 0 to b minus 1. 
it was zero to B, then it would just roll over to the next place. The, the ones place, if you put a 10 in the ones place, it rolls over to the tens place. So it's, for binary, each digit is a zero or a one. So let's go digit by digit and try and figure out 19. Two to the five is what? 16. Two to the five is not 16. <laughs> these, are, these, are, these always get me. This is why the computer does this for us, and we don't do these. Uh, two to the five is what? 32. 32 is bigger than 19. So in fact, it's not a part of the summation. So we, in fact, we'd put a zero here. Okay? Two to the four is what? 16. 16. 16 is less than 19. So the way we can write 19 as a sum of powers of two would involve this digit. So we put a one here. Then we compute 19 minus 16 to get what? Three? So we put a one in this fourth, fifth place, I suppose. And we want to now represent the remaining spots of three. Well, th what is two to the three? Eight. Eight. Eight is too big. Two squared? Zero. Too big. Two to the one? Three. Two. Well, two is less than three, so we'll do three minus two. That's equal to one, so we'll put a one here. And then we'll, uh, what is two to the zero? One, and we have a one. Okay, great. So in binary, 19 in base 10 is equal to what in base 2? We can ignore leading zeros. So it's 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And we write a little 2 there to make sure we don't accidentally confuse that for 10,011. That's a number in base 2. So that's how we would write a number uh, in base 10 with our 10 fingers to a number in base 2. Right? Questions on that quick example? You guys have seen basis conversion in some elementary school in some sense. Uh, this is a warm-up. We'll prove one uh, useful theorem today about this. All right, let's do the same number, but in base 3. We want to write in base 3. Let's just write a couple powers out. Let's get 3 cubed. Let's just, that's a good estimate to start. 3 squared. Uh, 3, the 1. Uh, oops. All right, 3 cubed is what? 27. 27 is bigger than 19. So, we'll, of course, I'm just going to say this is not even a, a, a thing there. 3 squared is what? 9. So, 19 minus 9 is equal to 10, right? But actually, we can subtract another 9 from there, right? So, we can actually put two nines into 19. So we put a two here. Now we have one left over. How do we put uh, three to the one is three. It's too big. Three is bigger than one. So we put a zero here. And then we have uh, a, uh, a, the, uh, the last value here. This is going to be just our one. So we see that 19 in base 10 is equal <coughs> to 201 in base 3. Now, in any base, the digits are going to be between 0 and b minus 1. So all, it, when you write a number in base 3, every number is a 0, 1, or 2. When you write a number in base 2, every number is a 0, 1. When you write a number in base nine, uh, 10, every number is between 0 and 9. Now, that works kind of conveniently if you have uh, each digit represented by a symbol for bases less than 10, because we already have symbols for those numbers. But what about bases bigger than 10? So... Uh, we say base 16 is called hexadecimal. This is a pretty popular and common one. But we run out of symbols uh, to do it, right? So you need 15 distinct symbols. You need 16 distinct symbols. You need 0 through 15. So well, the first 10 symbols we can do easily, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, OK. Well, 10 is a number that we represent with two symbols in base 10. We can't use two symbols here. So what do hexadecimal people figure it out? Let's use letters. Every, every, everything in math has letters now. So we do A, B, C, D, E, and F. Where these, the letters, are kind of like when you play cards and you have the king and the queen and the jack, and they kind of have their own rules. But they are basically like an 11 or a 12 if you were to think of it that way. Ten, a is really a single symbol to represent 10. B is a single symbol to represent 11. 
12, 13, 14, and then 15, right? Base 16 will have symbols 0 through 15. It'll have those 16 symbols, right? So suppose we wanted to convert to and from uh, base 16. I'll give you a number. I'll give you AF3, OK? And this is in base 16. What is this in base 10, right? Um, so what we're going to do is, again, write it out as in, the, in the hexadecimal expansion. We'll do A times 16 squared plus F times 16 plus 3, right? And 3 is times 16 to the 1. Now, A here, again, is a single symbol, but it represents a, large, a larger number that in base 10 we have to uh, write with two symbols. Numbers are independent of the way that you write them. It turns out you could do all of math, again, in base 2 if you wanted. Everything you've ever done, it, you could write numbers in any base. It doesn't really matter that we use A for 10. But since we're going to work out in base 10, and we all know how to use base 10, we'll, we'll rewrite this in base 10. So this is 10 times 16 squared plus uh, F is 15. So I'm going to go look at my little table there. 15 times 16, and then plus 3. Um, can anyone do that in their head? No? Okay. Well, I didn't expect you to. This is 2,803. So that's f Notice another thing. That's four digits. That's three digits. So when you have a higher and higher base, you can actually represent the number in a much smaller way. If you have more symbols to use, you can represent a number in a more compact way. Um, great. Let's do one more number conversion. And it, when you convert from base 2 to base 3 or base 10 to base 3, things are kind of complicated. You're for, sort of forced to do this almost brute force-like way to do it. But if you can convert n uh, numbers that are multiples of each other, it turns out it's actually really easy. So suppose I gave you the number uh, 40, uh, 45,242, and I'll, I'll tell you this is in base 10, right? What do you know about, uh, we want to convert this uh, to base 2 and uh, base 16, OK? But base 10 to base 2 is a little difficult. But base 2 to base 16, it turns out, is pretty easy. What do you know about 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2 to the 1 plus uh, 2 to the 0? Equals 2 to the 4th minus 1. Yeah. What is 2 to the 4 minus 1? 15. 15. So these are four digits of binary, but they can equal one digit of hexadecimal. So you can do, if the numbers are powers of each other, multiples of, powers of each other, you can take several digits and quickly convert it. So I'll tell you 45,242 in base 2 is going to be equal to 1011, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, OK? Big binary number. You can represent it in five digits in base 10. Unfortunately, you have to use, how many digits is that? That's 16 digits. That's too long. The computer is going to do that for you and not uh, us. But we can convert this quickly to something in base 16, OK? This is a sum of powers of the first smallest powers of two, right? One zero one zero is going to be two is going to be two to the three. Skip that one plus two, right? So what is two to the three plus two? Ten. Ten. Now we go over here. We look at what ten is supposed to be. Ten is supposed to be a. So we know that this is an a. It turns out that you can just do this for all. All groups of four. What is one zero one one? Eleven. What is eleven in base sixteen? Uh, B. Zero 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 zero. Zero. What is one zero one one? B. So this spells boba. Sometimes instead of writing things like this. You may see things written with the 0x, uh, like that. The 0x is just the, a more computer science notation for writing something in base 16. You can spell 
kind of crazy words hidden in numbers uh, using hexadecimal. One of, the more, more, one of the common ones is dead beef. Right? That's just some hexadecimal number, whatever it is. But you can, you, you can occasionally hide code words like this, and there's, there's some puzzles involving hexadecimal letters. Um, any questions on converting numbers from basis? The computer, in any practical case, honestly, the computer's going to do this for you, but you have to know what the computer's doing in the background. So this is basically what's going on. Any questions on converting numbers? All right. Now, we converted one number to another, written in one form to another, but uh, why can you do that? Let's prove something called uh, the basis representation theorem. Basis representation theorem says for all n that is a natural number, n can be uniquely written in base b. n can be uniquely written in base b. Now, the cool thing about proof is it can confirm what are your own suspicions? You should suspect that there's only one way to write a number in any base, base 2, base 10, whatever. There shouldn't be two ways to write a number. And in fact, you can confirm that. We're going to do a, a weaker form of this, and we'll do the case of uh, n is equal to 2. Excuse me, b is equal to do, uh, 2. We don't have too many powerful tools of modular arithmetic yet. So we'll do the special case of b, uh, the base is equal to 2. Any two numbers can be uniquely written in a binary. Also, the base must be greater than equal to 2. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, how should we start a proof like this? If we want to prove something uniqueness, what's the first attempt? What's the first start? Uh, assume to, uh, let's say, a, a and b. Uh, then if it's, unique, if it's unique, then a must be equal to b. Perfect. Uniqueness, assume there's two distinct representations, show that they're the same. Suppose uh, n is equal to sum of a i, i is equal to 0 to k of a i, 2 to the i, uh, and n is equal to the sum of i is equal to 0 of, to k of b i, 2 to the i. We prove that if there's two ways to write a number, a i and b i, uh, for all i uh, between 0 and k, that uh, uh, a of i is equal to b of i. So we'll prove that if there are two ways to write a number, let's say a i and b i, that uh, the sum of a i and the sum of b i, that a i must equal b i, right? So if, uh, here's how we will proceed. Suppose that a i is a way to write n, and also, bi is a way to write n for some n. There's some n that maybe could be written twice. Um, we have n is equal to 2 uh, to a to the k, 2 to the k, plus dot, 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 plus uh, a to the 2, 2 squared, plus a to the 1, 2, plus a0, which is equal to... Uh, b to the k, 2 to the k, plus dot, 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 plus uh, b2, 2 squared, plus b1, 2, plus uh, uh, b0, OK? Now, notice that the first, if there's k digits, the first k minus 1 of them all have a power of 2. Let's factor out the 2. We're going to get 2 times a to the k, 2 to the k minus 1, plus, plus, a2, 2 plus A1 plus A0, which is equal to 2BK, 
2 to the k minus 1 plus plus uh, b2 2 plus b1 plus b0. Now, we are doing the proof in binary. So we know that for all ai and bi, they're just a digit. They're, excuse me, a bit. They're only a 0 or a 1. So if we can write these two summations to be equal, what's a conclusion you can draw from this? To A1 equal to BK. Mm, that actually may be true, but there's a, another thing we can draw from this, a simpler one. For proof writing, that would maybe be a little harder to convince a reader. There's a simpler statement that a, a, that a, that's a reader could uh, observe. N is either even or odd but not both. What does that imply? A naught is either 1 or 0. A naught is either 1 or 0, correct. But what does that also tell you about B naught? A naught is 1 or 0. Yes, but if Notice that a, if a0 is 1, that means n is odd, right? What, do you know, what does that mean about a, what do you know about a0 and b0 then? They're both odd. Same? They're equal, yeah. That means a0 is equal to b0. Would you agree if we can write this as 2 times something and then 2 times something, where you know a0 and b0 are just uh, either 0 or 1. They must be bits. N can't be both even and odd. It has to be either both even or both odd. But either way, that means that the last bit must be equal. Right? Now, since A0 equals B0, consider N prime to be equal to N minus A0 over 2. And since A0 equals B0, this is N minus B0 over 2. Right? What is N minus A0 over 2? It's going to be a0, you're going to minus that, and then you're going to divide by 2, this power of 2. So this is just going to be, uh, since these two are equal, that's going to imply that a to the k, 2 to the k minus 1, plus, uh, plus a2, 2 plus a1 is equal to bk, 2 to the k minus 1, plus, plus b2, 2 plus b1. Right? Now, n prime, you know, is a number, right? Every number is either even or odd, but not both. If you know n prime is even or odd or not both, what does that imply? A1 equals B1. Yeah, you're going to pull out another 2 here. That if n prime is either even or odd or not both, that implies that a1 is equal to b1. Right? So we know that a0 is equal to b, b0. a1 is equal to b1. But we can just re repeat the argument again. Repeat. J times. Then uh, we see uh, for all i... Uh, 0 less than or equal to i, less than or equal to k, that uh, a of i is equal to bi. So if there did exist two representations of the same number, it turns out they're the, they're the same representation. They're not distinct. Kind of an elementary proof of something you may have already obviously known. Questions on that? Excellent.